but we'll continue by now looking at how we use binomial theorem to determine the square roots of imperfect squares. Of course, how do you find the square root of 17? Is the example that we're going to work with. Okay, so with that example, you should be able to answer all these simple questions like finding the square root of 5, finding the square root of so instead of even just finding the square root, you know, so you should also be able to find, let's say, the fourth root of 17 and all that. So how basically do we handle this using the binomial theorem? So all the same, if you try to express that in terms of a power, you understand that the square root is the same as the power 1 over 2, right? So you, this now gives you an idea of what we're supposed to use. Because we've already said each time you've got a fraction or a negative power you have to deal with uh, 1 plus x the power n so this already reminds you of uh, the fact that this is equal to 1 plus nx plus n n minus 1 2 factorial x squared plus n n minus 1 n minus 2 3, and so on and so forth so for the sake of our examples I'm still going to end on the on the third part there so if you already know that then it's a good start for you so I'm going to do this I'll take it up from the from the top part so the square root that we're trying to find is the square root of 17. So 17 can be expressed in the form of 1 plus x as 1 plus 16, the power 1 over 2. Now remember, if you remember very well, previously I did mention to say this formula applies when the value of x is less than 1. So how do we ensure that? So we can add new brackets so that we can factorize the inner part there. So if you decide to factorize 16 from the inside, you are going to have, for the first part where you've got a 1, it will be 1 over 16, and then the part where you've got a 16, it will be a 1. Now, I don't want to start with 1 over 16 and then plus 1, so I'll just say 1 plus 1 over 16. Now don't forget that the entire part is raised to the power 1 over 2 because everything is inside there. So we can distribute the half to what is inside. So if I introduce the half to 16, 16 to the power 1 over 2, that's the square root of 16, so it is a 4. And then the other part is in determinant, so the 1 over 2 will just be outside there. Okay. Some of you may be like, I oh, know I'm about to find the square root of, of, of 1. No, we're looking at the product as a whole. So that's what we have. So now, the, the part that we can use the binomial is the inner part. 1 plus 1 over 16 to the power 1 over 2. Okay. So <coughs> on the next step, we'll say we have... 1 plus 1 over 16 to the power 1 over 2. And then we'll just substitute in this equation. So now the interesting part here is in this case now the value of x is known. Okay. And n is known. So we have 1 plus, so where there's n, we'll be putting half, where there's uh, the x. We'll be putting 1 over 16. So you have 1 plus half of the x, which is 1 over 16, plus, I'm now on the second part. So I have half, let me write that properly. So we have half, half minus 1, of course, is already negative half, over 2 factorial is just 2. Now x squared is going to be 1 over 16 squared. Again, 
here we have half half minus 1 is also negative 1 over 2 half minus 2 is negative 3 over 2 over 3 factorial which is just 3 times 2 times 1 which is just a 6 and then of course we've got x to the power 3 now x in this case is 1 over 16 so it will be 1 over 16 to the power 3 so we're just ending on the third power for this example so we have 1 plus 1 over 32 and then of course for the second part you have uh, this part so half times negative half will be negative 1 over 4 divided by 2 will be negative 1 over 8 so negative 1 over 8 I'm now using a calculator multiply by 1 over because I don't want to waste a lot of time 1 over 16 squared so that is negative 1 over 2048 and then the other part negative 1 over 2 multiplied by half multiply by negative 3 over 2 divided by 6 multiply by 1 over 16 to the power 3 so that is positive 1 over 6 5 5 3 6 so minus 1 over 2 0 4 8 plus 1 over 3 2 plus 1 so after adding all these numbers the value that I'm getting is 1.030777 six nine seven and eight okay so some of you are wondering just, ah, how can that be the answer how can it be the answer because that number even if we multiply it by itself it will not be able to give us what 17 so take note there was a four that was outside so what we've only expanded is what is inside partially so we have 1.030 seven seven six nine seven eight so that is what is equal to one plus one over sixteen to the power one over two now we can multiply that by four so after multiplying by four the approximate value is one four point one two three one zero seven nine one so what happens if you try to square that so after i square that the value that it's giving me is 17.0000 which is close enough even all the way up to six significant figures it will still be 17 so that this indicates how helpful the binomial expansion is in trying to help you determine or approximate the values of the square root so of course even without using a calculator you are able to handle it up to this part so meaning that even in a case where you don't have a calculator you are able to approximate the value of what of a square root so i believe this part you are able to simplify it without even using a calculator so multiplying that by 4 will be able to give you the the approximate value of an imperfect square root okay so with this simple understanding I want you to apply what we've talked about and try to approximate the value of uh, the fourth root of 17 and then also try to approximate the square root of 5 without using a calculator okay so basically that's a basic idea on how what you're supposed to do and what you're supposed to apply when it comes to dealing with the square root.